I'm not too sure what, what, the, what the comment about financial turmoil really means, um, but it would be good to, to have that um, information about what's going on with our investments. Um, yeah, um, yeah, through the chair, look, we, can, we can comment on more. I mean, yeah, the financial turmoil um, was a reflection of what's happening internationally as far as the market. Yeah, well, I like to hear it. That, yeah, I, I, overall, yeah. the world economy seems to be pretty reasonably good, but uh, let's have that information about the turmoil stuff. Yeah, OK. Well, the, okay. That's, that's, yeah, that, that comment of financial turmoil is not in the connection with Council's operations at all. It is purely a reflection that as the market has moved, we must, in an accounting sense, reflect that and how we actually show the numbers here. That would be good to, to have a considered report on, on those sorts of things. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah, Councillor Wood. Well, I just want to make a comment. Um, I just want to comment on what the Deputy Mayor was saying, that, you know, it's hunky-dory. Um, I think, Councillor uh, Council Holtz, I'd like you to come and talk or listen to some of the people that... Uh, uh, Councillor Wood. Well, that's respect, what I'm just... With respect, oh, okay. Councillor... Well, Councillor Holtz okay. didn't say that, and well, I just, don't uh, think it's sensible. Well, I'm, I'm going to say, say then, I'll just say my comment will be that this council came into being in 2010, and the debt was around about 3,000 million. But if you look at this now, it's now up to 6,715 million. It's doubled. And that is the concern that people around Auckland have with this council. Because are we seeing improved services? No. In a lot of areas, we aren't. And I think that is one of the issues. And the other issue is some people are paying huge rates and others um, are, not as, are not as substantial. And I do think that this council needs to look at our, ba our balance sheet. And uh, hopefully we're going to do that today. And hopefully councillors will support more work done on the... EY and Cameron Partners um, reports, but uh, quite frankly, this council needs to cut its cloth to suit, and uh, I think that uh, we have got to be very careful, and uh, hopefully that will occur uh, in the future, because those, that debt is, is increasing, and we know it's increasing, and uh, people are um, concerned about it out there, and to say that it, that, that that, that's no problem. Well, I think it is. And, Madam uh, Chair, I think I deserve a, a slight right of reply and clarity. Well, no. I, no, well, no I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm asking, asking for I just, I just want to say, I'm just giving my version of the view. It's my, my view. Are you so, talking to the recommendation of the group report? Piece? Oh, yeah. I mean, that's, okay. that's all Good. bound up in this report. And, you know, um, some councils came into this new council with reasonably... Con, uh, con debt under control. Others had substantial debt, and that's I one of the other issues. I will then call a point of order, Thank Madam you. Chair. Well, I'm, I'm just, I'm I'm just calling a point of out, order. I'm just pointing out the realities of Councillor life. Councillor Myers. And I, and I Thank think you. That Madam Chair, my point of order is 1.7.2, and it is part D, and it is misrepresentation of any statement made by a member. So I'd like to clarify. Thank you. Well, I don't I, think that's, that's a point of order. I think it is a point of order. Councillor George Wood, I am ruling it is a point of order, and you did rather misrepresent what the Deputy Mayor said. So I'm ruling that council. Am I allowed to clarify one point, Madam Chair? My point is simply, Councillor... Councillor Wood? Yeah. The point I'm making, and you may have missed this, is that our current debt level, five years on, is completely commensurate with what we would expect. And I don't know if you have looked recently at some of the old LTPs of the previous councils and the projected debt levels that were there. We have not remained static over five years. We've grown by a city the size of Hamilton with the infrastructure that's required. And anyone who would have imagined that the debt would reduce over five years probably needs <coughs> to have a look. At the infrastructure that <coughs> point of order, Madam Chair. The council would never suggested that the no, debt would reduce. Not a point of order. Brewer. Well, uh, not a point I of quote order. the number that Councillor Hulse uh, referred to as a misrepresentation of position. Right, and can we move <coughs> on? Can I finish my? Yes, speech? you may. Well, I just wanted to pick up that I do think that uh, this is a matter that uh, this council needs to look at, and even as early as the, the annual plan and. Uh, you know, it's all right to say that we're going to bail the government out on the CRL, which we are doing, 
They're not putting any money up on this preliminary work. $450 million we've spent already. And the rat's what kind of got the ratepayers of Auckland concerned. And uh, I, I think as a councillor representing North Shore, North Shore Ward, I should bring the concerns of my people yep. to this table here, and that's well the reason what I'm doing now. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Wood. Councillor Cashmore. Yes, thanks, good. Madam Chair. Kevin or Francis, when we look at our, um, our debt maturity profiles, I sort of asked this every last, last year as well, the fact that worldwide interest rates are sort of at almost record lows, is our profiling there appropriate at this point in time? And what is the ability? I know you're saying you're hedging out sometimes 12 years with these things. Um, is that, how's that profile matrix compared to actualities when we, you know, what we're seeing? Right. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, through you, Chair. The question was about our debt maturity profile and low interest rates. Um, I mean, we first of all we separate out our funding risk yep. for our interest rate risk. So our funding risk is all around spreading our debt maturity profile so we don't have too much to fund in any yep. one particular period of time. Uh, the interest rate risk is uh, fixing that exposure uh, out again 5, 10, 15 years to take advantage of low interest rates and again spread that maturity profile. So it's all about reducing risk and over the long term um, having stable and predictable cash flows. Yep. Does that answer your question, Councillor Cashmore? I might give a chat to Francis and have a look at the graphs. Just what we're seeing at the moment internationally is the markets are sort of, interest rates are flat lining. And, you, and if we're seeing an American uplift, then that may potentially affect that when you're looking at that four to seven year period bracket. So it's just interesting work. But it's, it's already, it's done. I understand the long term into you know, yeah, through, decadal <coughs> work. But. Yeah, through, through you, Chair. I mean, what, what we're doing with interest rates, as you're right, it's fairly flat out for quite long periods of time, mm -hmm. and you'll eventually see a rise in US long-term interest rates. And what we're doing at the moment is extending our um, interest rate profile out 5, 10, and 15 years. So locking in our interest rates, rates, rates at low rates. Okay. Yeah. So that's what I to say. That 42% is actually moving up from where it was before. Correct. We're extend in actively extending our interest rate profile. Okay. Thanks, Madam Chair. Thank you. I might have one other question, yeah. Madam Chair, and that's probably to to Kevin, the fact that we're moving to 100% funding of depreciation, which will affect our debt profiling towards the end of this LTP term, um, the actual costings of that on an mm. annualised basis is what? To lift it from where it started at 60-odd percent to, at the formation of the City Council going to 100 2025? Yeah. With the, yeah, and through the Chair, with the implication of that being that as depreciation is purely a book entry, it's not an actual cash mm. outgo, but you are 100% funding it, you're actually going to get an additional surplus of cash coming in, which means we can actually use that for, for, for debt repayments debt or other repayments. purposes. It's 2.5%. Yep. So it drops the debt curve, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Going out. Thank you. Councillor Filipina. Thank you, Chair. Um, just want to, to get some information on uh, what our assets, how much have our assets grown over the five years since 2010. We got any indication on that? I mean, we've heard about debt, but I'm looking at assets as well because I'm sure that that they would have grown as well. Yeah, um, yeah um, through the chair, I haven't got the numbers yes. to hand, but um, I mean, 1.5 billion dollars was spent on capital expenditure last year. Prior years were up around about 800, 900 million. Oh, okay. So the capital expenditure, the investment in the city would have at least been five or six billion dollars. Okay, okay. Look, and, and also just our, our, our debt to asset ratio. Do, do, do you know what that is? I, just as a matter of interest. In here. Through, through you, chair, the, the debt total asset ratio currently is around 16, 17 percent. And that's remained relatively constant over the last few years. And as we go through the long-term plan, we'll increase only modestly, remain around sort of, you know, 16 to 19 per cent. Modestly. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> Thank, Thank you, you Councillor Philippine. It's all right. There's no other questions. <coughs> oh, Councillor Brewer. Oh, since we're asking these parliamentary questions. Oh, um, parliamentary. <coughs> Sorry, and I mine will be with an order too, <laughs> Madam Chair. Um, <laughs> What are, what are our <coughs> annual interest payments on our total group debt per annum now? Total group debt, um, through you, Chair, it's roughly 5% uh, times our overall debt, the group debt, of about 7 billion. So you're talking three, what are we at? Yeah, 
400 odd million. 400 odd million, so over a million a day on interest. And what is that projected to be, uh, even though debt is projected to go to 11.5 billion, what is our annual uh, interest repayment set to be at the end of the LTP? It's going to lift from 400 million to how much? It'll be six, 700 million. 700 million, thank you. Thank you. Right. What is that as a percentage of um, council income, Madam Chair? Well, 12. 12. <coughs> oh. 12%. And that flat line's pretty much, I believe. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. 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 So, Chair, just, uh, council Cooper, just a quick question no um, through you, Madam Chair. If we um, rate funded capital, um, what sort of um, increases in rates would we have if we paid um, for capital <laughs> expenditure? out of rates and didn't borrow? Sorry. Uh, is it just um, too enormous to even uh, work out? Probably so starts if with if three we're spending and about <laughs> <laughs> If we're spending about 1.5 billion on CapEx a year, and potentially going up to 1.8 for the group, and our rates is around about $1.4 billion. So if we, <coughs> we'd have to double mm. the rates. In okay, thank you. If we didn't yes. borrow, we'd have to double the rates. Thank you. And one has to say how many of us bought our houses without a mortgage. Um, right, okay, it's been moved and seconded. I'll put that. All those in favour? Aye. 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 Carried. Thank you. Thank you, team. Yes. Yes, John Francis and Kevin.